The price rate of change represents a momentum oscillator, measuring the speed at which the price is changing within a defined time period. The rate of change calculates the percentage change between the most recent price and the price registered a certain number of periods ago. The platform's an oscillator moving above and below the zero line as the rate of change moves from positive to negative. So the rate of change is plotted against zero with the indicator moving upwards into positive territory if the price changes are to the upside and moving into negative territory if the price changes are to the downside. Like other momentum indicators like stochastic oscillator for example, the rate of change can be interpreted in numerous ways. Traders using this oscillator for overbought and oversold signals, divergences and zero line crossovers. A value above zero indicates an increase in bullish momentum and a negative value suggests an increase in downward momentum. A rising rate of change typically confirms an uptrend but this can be misleading as the indicator is only comparing the current price to the price n periods ago. A falling rate of change indicates the current price is below the price n periods ago. This usually helps confirm a downtrend but isn't always accurate. When the price is consolidating, the rate of change will move near zero level. In this case, it's important to watch the overall price trend since the rate of change will provide little insight except for confirming the sideways movement. Overbought and oversold levels are not fixed on the rate of change and each asset will generate its own extreme levels. Traders can see what these levels are by looking at past readings and observing the extreme levels the price rate of change reached before the price reversed. All markets can work well with the price rate of change. There are no right or wrong settings to use, but every trader has to make decisions depending on the market conditions and the volatility of the financial markets. The rate of change can be used on various time frames. It can be used for short-term trading, but in general the value of the rate of change is better used for identifying the long-term trend. There are many settings that can be used for the rate of change oscillator. The common settings used for this indicator is 9 periods. Other commonly used settings include 14, 21 and even 50. Remember that there is no absolute number that can magically give the right settings. Rather, it's important to analyze the behavior of the stock or the currency you're trading in order to use the right or the most appropriate settings for the price rate of change. The volatility of the market being analyzed is of course of utmost importance. Using too small a number, like 9 for example, can lead to very choppy readings, while using a higher configuration setting could potentially lag the price rate of change to the point that signals can be very delayed. If we take a look at this market, you can see that when using a 5 period setting for the oscillator, the price rate of change can be choppy. While it might look easy in hindsight, it is important to note that this oscillator will have problems to pick up tops and bottoms, or in other words, rising and falling momentum in price. So you need to find the right balance suited for the market you're trading and the time frame you're mainly using. How to trade with the price rate of change First strategy, using the rate of change as a timing tool within a trend analysis. We already know that price never moves in a straight line. The price posts a series of highs and lows within the trend. The challenge is of course in buying near the low point or the dip in the uptrend or selling near the high point or the rally in the downtrend. The rate of change indicator can help you to find these points. Trends can be analyzed either by looking at the highs and lows or by looking at the signals from the technical indicators such as moving averages. In this first approach of using the rate of change to analyze a market, let's look at a simple setup that involves one moving average and the price rate of change. Maybe the most common way traders use the rate of change oscillator is entering the market when the plotted line crosses the zero level. A breakout in either direction indicates increasing or decreasing momentum. By itself, 
this signal is not reliable, because sometimes the rate of change can dip below the zero line only to reverse back higher. And this is an important point to note, the rate of change reacts to price and not the other way around. Therefore, you need to focus on price and price action as well before trading this simple method with the rate of change indicator. We can improve the zero line crossover approach when we combine the price rate of change with the trend indicator. As we can observe in this example, when used in combination with a moving average, the rate of change offers several entries in the market when the line crosses below the zero line. As most of the oscillators, the rate of change works well in a trending scenario. The first step is to determine the prevailing trend on the market. You can use the classic moving averages like 50, 100 or 200. In this example, I opted for a 50 period simple moving average. When the price trades above the 50 period simple moving average, consider taking only long entries. And when the price trades below the 50 period SMA, search for short entries. Then you monitor the rate of change indicator and take the zero line crossovers only in confirmation with the 50 period SMA. Consider exiting your position when the slope of the rate of change turns in the opposite direction. Here are some examples of zero line crossovers confirmed by a moving average. The second strategy involves using the rate of change for divergences. The concept of divergence is the same whether you are using the relative strength index, the stochastics or the price rate of change. A divergence is common to all oscillators. When the oscillator forms a fresh low but the price doesn't, or when the price forms a higher high but the oscillator doesn't, it indicates a possible divergence and signals a correction. Using this knowledge, you can apply the price rate of change and look for divergences with price. So a divergence occurs when the price of a stock or another asset moves in one direction while its price rate of change moves in the opposite direction. For example, if a stock's price is rising over a period of time while rate of change is progressively moving lower, then the rate of change is indicating a bearish divergence from price which signals a possible trend change to the downside. The same concept applies if the price is moving down and the price rate of change is moving higher. This could signal a price move to the upside. A divergence is a leading signal, but could prove to be a notoriously poor timing signal since a divergence can last a long time and won't always result in a price reversal. Timing a divergence is even more important than spotting the pattern. This example shows the rate of change posting a long-term divergence. There are several peaks for the rate of change reading, and all of them would have given wrong trading signals. One method to time the divergence and filter the bad signals is to wait for a trendline breakout on the chart. Also, you can wait for the price rate of change to cross below zero level. In this example, we can see an instance of divergence that is forming. Here, price posted a lower low, but the rate of change oscillator posted a higher low. This divergence, known as a bullish divergence, can be used in two ways. You can go long on the market after this trendline breakout, or after the rate of change crosses above zero, indicating a bullish momentum. The third approach involves overbought and oversold signals. These levels are not fixed, but will vary depending on the market being traded. Traders look to see what rate of change values resulted in price reversals in the past. They try to find both positive and negative values where the price reversed with some regularity in the past. When the rate of change reaches these extreme levels again, they will watch for the price to start reversing to confirm the rate of change signal. Honestly. I don't prefer this approach at all. This strategy might work in a non-trending market, but during strong trends, traders often get false signals, as shown in this example. 
As I said before, the rate of change shows readings at extreme values, but it has no boundaries. In a very strong uptrend, for example, the rate of change could show readings outside the usual range within a specific time period. These overbought or oversold extremes can be monitored as they could indicate a trend reversal, but these extreme values are highly subjective. So I wouldn't concentrate my attention on overbought or oversold levels. Another potential problem when using the rate of change indicator is that its calculation gives equal weight to the most recent price and the price formed a number of periods ago, despite the fact that some traders consider more recent price action to be of more importance in determining likely future price movements. This can result in multiple false signals for the trend trades. That's why it's important to keep an eye on the price action, on recent market swings, and always look at the big picture on multiple time frames to increase your odds of trading in the right direction. As always, if you learned something new and found value, leave us a like to show our support, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to stay notified when we upload new videos. Until next time.